What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna get more in depth on a Blender add-on that allows you to create swarms and other creature animations in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so GeoSwarm is a new add-on that I kind of hit high level in one of my add-on update videos last week. And um, I wanted to get more in depth with it because it's actually a really interesting add-on. So you can find it in the Blender market. I will link to it in the notes down below. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning if I do, if you do purchase through that link, I will receive a commission. But um, if you go to GeoSwarm's page, you can see that this is basically an add-on for creating exactly what it sounds like um, for Swarm of swarms of bugs or flocks of birds, other things like that. And so note that there's two versions. There's the standard version, which is gonna come with the add-on and then some creatures or the premium, which includes all the assets that come along with this. And so this add-on um, basically comes with a swarm system or a swarm setup that you can use in order to set up different behaviors for your swarms as well as a number of different kinds of creatures so not only does this come with um, bugs um, that walk along the ground it also comes with flying creatures like bees and moths as well as um, different slithering creatures and then you've also got some birds and some rats and things like that so uh, it's a pretty deep library of things that you can use inside of Blender. Um, but let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that this works. So this is what GeoSwarm is going to look like when you install it. One thing to note about that is you do need to make sure that you install the add-on in your add-on section of your preferences. And then you also need to make sure that you link to the assets folder that comes along with this. So you're gonna to have to make sure that both of those work so that you can see the different creatures and other things like that. Now we do have the ability down below to add or spawn these creature models just by themselves, right? So you can bring in all the different ants. Um, you could probably, I'm not sure if you can bring in your own creatures. I think that you might be able to, um, but I've not gotten that in depth on this add-on. But you can add all of the individual models in here just like this. You can add the crickets, you can add whatever you want. So that's how to add the models individually. And notice how if I play the animation, this is rigged so that they've got some movement in here, right? The legs are going to move um, so that when they move along in your scene, it's going to look like they're actually walking along the surface. But let's take a look at some of the swarm settings that are contained in here. So first off, let's go ahead and let's pick um, some kind of a creature. So let's go with uh, one of the crawling creatures. We'll go with the ant preset for right now. So I'm just going to take this and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the option for add swarm and so when I do that that's going to add the system right here this is basically the area where the models are going to be spawned and notice how if I hit the play key right here nothing is happening yet because we haven't told this which surface this needs to spawn on so what we can do is we can go down into our swarm settings and what it's going to do is it's going to look for a surface collection. That just basically means that we need to create a collection that our plane that this is going to walk on is on. So I'm just going to call this surface collection right here. We'll click on this and we'll select that surface collection. Make sure that you actually move your plane in here so that this knows to spawn this on that plane. But now if I click play, notice what that's going to do is that's going to spawn all of these ants on this surface right here. And notice how at the moment they're not really acting with any kind of like direction or anything like that. It's just going to spawn those creatures. And then you can adjust things like the number of creatures that are spawned. So if I type in value a thousand, notice how it's going to spawn more creatures when I restart this animation. If I typed in hundred and then respawned it, it's going to spawn less creatures, but they're still going to act on this surface. Now, one thing to note about this is because these are tied to the surface, if I was to come in here and add some additional geometric detail. So I'm just going to right click on this surface and I'm gonna subdivide it. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna pick a corner and we'll turn proportional editing on like this. Notice how if I hit play, these are still going to follow along with this surface, right? Because it's using the surface 
as um, it's using the surface as the domain on which these uh, creatures are supposed to walk. So you can use this to make these go up over hills or whatever you want inside of your scene. So now let's undo that and let's go ahead and take a look at our swarm settings. So you can also set the size of the creatures that are created using the size option right here. And you can also set some randomization in here. So if you want bigs and smalls in here, you can do that using this little setting right here. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting about this is notice how what this is doing is this is referencing a spawn collection over here. And what that means is that means that it's using this for the creature that it's placing in here. Well, if you were to select a different kind of creature, right? So maybe not the cricket, but maybe um, some of the beetles. So we're just gonna add those creatures right here. We're gonna kind of move them out of the way. So one, two, three, four. We'll take those beetles and move them over here. And ugh, does anyone else get a bunch of these stink bugs around this time of year in their house? Um, they are everywhere where I live, which is very frustrating. But um, let's say that we were to take maybe this assassin beetle and we were to drag it into that um, ant collection. So let's go down, let's find that ant mesh zero one, and then maybe the beetle as well. Notice how now this is going to place not only ants, but also beetles because we added them to that collection. So you can use this in order to spawn really any kind of bug that you want in here. Now notice that there is. And so by adding those creatures to this collection that your scatter system is referencing, this is going to use all of those models in here um, instead of just the ant model that was in there. Now, one thing to note about this is note that there's also the option for endless spawning. If you set endless spawning, what that's going to do is that's going to spawn them one at a time rather than all at once. So um, if you're looking for them to not all be in there at one time in one mass, you can check the box for endless spawning like this. You can also set how fast all of the creatures are by adjusting the speed down below. So notice how if I speed this up, they're gonna go a lot faster. If I slow it down, they're gonna go a lot slower. So depending on what you're looking for, um, you can definitely do that. So you can also set the scale of the pattern that they're walking in. And so basically what that's gonna do is that's going to basically set how far they go, right? So if I set this to a higher value, notice how this ant, for example, isn't going very far. And if I set this to like five, notice how they're just gonna stay in one spot right here. Not necessarily what you want, so you can use this to adjust if they're gonna go a long way or a short way inside your scene. Now there are some interesting options in here having to do with being able to make these follow along things like curves. So if I was to check the box for use curve and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drop a curve in here. So I'm just going to do a shift A, we're gonna add a Bezier curve and I'll just tab in edit mode and delete this one and I'll just draw Whoops, I don't wanna do that on the cursor, I wanna do that on the surface, but I'll just draw a path that kinda of like works its way through my scene like this. So just a simple curve that's gonna be 100% flat. Well now if I take this system and I set it to curve and I reference that curve object, these are going to, once they're spawned, kind of start following along with the curve. Now one thing to note about this is you need to make sure that you set the distance to something lower like this. So when you set the distance to something lower, they're gonna be a lot closer to your curve. If you set this bigger, um, they're still gonna follow along the curve, but they're gonna be further away from it. So notice how the bigger this curve distance value is, the further away from the curve they're going to be but they're gonna kind of follow along with your curve um, inside of your simulation. So in addition to being able to use the curve, you can also use attraction as well as avoidance. So within this system, if you set this to use attraction and you have an attraction collection, so in this case, I'm gonna create a collection, I'm gonna call it attraction, and I'm going to drag those spheres into that attraction section like this. Well now, within the system, if I check the box for attraction, I set it to my attraction collection, notice how these are going to be attracted to the sphere. And you can set the strength of that attraction inside of your system. Um, so you can set the distance as well as the target 
distance. So I'm gonna set this attraction distance to something bigger, but notice how if I go into a top-down view, I move this around, these bugs are going to follow along with the sphere, like this. And if I was to select both of these, then they would follow around both of them. So you can use this to make objects go towards something. This could be especially helpful if you had like a torch model or something like that. Now, alternatively, you do also have the option in here to use avoidance. And so avoidance is gonna work exactly the opposite way. And I'm gonna go ahead and reference the attraction section, even though um, that's not really what I want. But now if I move this, notice how the bugs are going to try to avoid that sphere like this. And you can set the strength inside of your system of that effect. So you can set the avoidance strength to something stronger, and you can also set that distance to something bigger. Whoops. But now, notice how they're going to try to stay away from that sphere. Notice them kind of running away from the sphere as I move it around. So you can use this in order to create avoidance systems. Um, so if you had something where you had a whole bunch of beetles on the ground, something like that, um, and then you wanted someone to like walk through them, you could set this to basically move them out of the way using the avoidance system. And so we've also got the barrier option. And again, this is gonna work the same way with your collection, right? So I would just call this barrier. And we can move our cube inside of that collection, but if you reference that barrier collection in here, so right now if I play this without this set up as a barrier, notice how they're just gonna walk right through it, right? So if I move this over, over here, it's not actually affecting the bugs in the system. However, if I set this system up to reference that object as a barrier, it's not like a physics system, but they can't move through it anymore. So notice how they kind of move up to it, but they don't actually move through it. So if I was to bump this up to like a thousand bugs, when this resets, notice how they're still going to swarm around, but they're going to run up against that barrier and they're not going to be able to go through it. So you can use this to set up walls and other things inside of your scene um, to block the movement of the models. And so in addition to the bugs, you also have other systems like flying systems. So let's go ahead and select the butterfly system and add the swarm. And it placed it over here. So let's kind of move this over here. But this is the domain for the flying system. And again, it's referencing a um, mesh collection. But if I click on play, it's going to place those kind of near where this domain or where this object is. And again, you can use this to set the number of creatures that are created, right? So you can set more or less butterflies right here and make all those same adjustments that we talked about before. And so there's kind of an option over here for stay in bounds. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to set how strongly they set, they stay within the boundary of this sphere, right? So if you set it bigger, they're gonna go further away. If you set it smaller, they're going to be closer. And you've got kind of the same set of, uh, you've got the same set of things that you can use, right? You can use this um, to create barriers, you can use this to create avoidance, and you can use this to create attraction. But you can use this in order to create flying creatures right here. Note that you can set them to just kind of hover, meaning they're gonna kind of stay at the same height, and then you can set the speed at which they're moving around while they hover right here, where if I uncheck that, notice how they move around a lot more in your scene. So you've got flying options right here. You've also got some other ones in here that are kind of interesting, like the tuna. So if I was to add the tuna swarm, I'll move this over here. So you can use this in order to create creatures that like swim in your scene if you do want to add tuna. So overall, lots of different options in here, lots of different things you can do with this add-on. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this add-on. If you'd like to see more tutorials for it, I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to that on this page if you do want to check it out. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.